Welcome to this podcast on automated analysis of dermatoscopic images. The main question is, can a computer analyze a dermatoscopic image as good as we do? Usually, this question is answered by measuring performance on distinguishing nevi and melanomas. As an example, this current study from Mike Marchetti and Noel Codella worked with state-of-the-art algorithms. They conducted an international machine learning challenge, asking research groups to provide algorithms to distinguish melanomas from benign skin lesions. For training, these groups got about 900 images, a rather small number in the field of current artificial intelligence research. From the research groups, they selected a top five and challenged them against eight board-certified dermatologists in diagnosing nevi and melanomas. In brief, they found superior specificity of the machines when fixed to the same sensitivity as humans. Similar superiority was found by a German group recently. In fact, research groups around the world have found similar results since decades. So why aren't these algorithms used in clinical practice? Well, one reason is the limitation of these studies to a binary decision whether something is a nevus or a melanoma. If we remember our initial question, we didn't really care about nevi and melanomas only, but all pigmented lesions. This also includes dermatal fibromas, Bones disease, seborrheic keratoses and solar antigenes, ECCs, and angiomas. All of these classes have been rather neglected in previous research. This is why the HAND 10,000 project was initiated. The goal was to create a large public data set with all of these classes included, which should cover far more than 90% of pigmented skin lesions in practice. The images were collected in Austria and Australia, summing to a total of 10,015 images. They are available for free for non-commercial purposes, such as research, and if you want to know more about it, simply follow this QR link at the corner. How are those images used then? They were made available to human participants to test their own performance and also to machine learning groups internationally to develop new algorithms which are able to classify not only two, but all seven diagnoses. After that, human participants and algorithms were allowed to play against each other on new images. This was done on a custom platform called dermachallenge.com, which is open to registration and used for anyone. Every user had to predict the diagnoses for 30 cases and got a score where the answers of this were better, worse, or equal to an algorithm. Analysis after over 500 human participants showed that about two thirds of computer algorithms clearly outperformed humans on the number of correct answers. While this is impressive, what does it mean? Has the time come that we are being replaced by algorithms? Well, most probably not quite. Although good performance in experiments, today's algorithms suffer from a few problems. One example is the robustness to misleading things within an image. On the left, you see an image with skin markings and a ruler. A publicly available analysis model on modeldarm.com detects a malignancy with a high probability. Now, when using the very same image, but zoomed in so one can't see markings, the malignancy probability almost vanishes. Such an effect can be caused by the situation that image of the skin cancer in the training set of algorithms commonly have rulers and markings in them. So, having them in a test image can mislead an algorithm to shout malignancy, although there's nothing to worry about. Also, practical application can cause problems. This study from 2009 found that their algorithm missed three melanomas, but not because it couldn't recognize them, but because they weren't even photographed by the study physician in the first place. 
such a simple problem, but such an important one. One further problem is how we should interpret an algorithm to output. Let's look at this hypothetical situation, where the algorithm on the right returns your melanoma probability of 6%. What does it mean? Is 6% high? Is 6% low? Does it mend a biopsy or at least a follow-up visit? What if a scared patient is seeing this? Would they be more or less worried? While one could probably answer one or the other question, it shows that this current algorithm output is probably not the final solution and even misleading. There are multiple ways to overcome all of these problems and also others not mentioned within this video. One that may be successful is the following. As opposed to media and overcharged claims, the best solution might be not to not replace physicians at all. Algorithms can be used to help and guide decisions rather than overtake them. A method provided by this website is one way to achieve this, called content-based image retrieval. It searches for similar cases for you, where you can look at the diagnoses. In this case, basically all of them look quite similar and are labeled as basal cell carcinoma. In this situation, one can be quite confident the image in question is a BCC as well, but you can still make your own decision. It's like looking up a case in a textbook only more efficient. This is of course just one option to harness the power of algorithms in an understandable manner, with many others out there and being developed currently. In case you want to play with algorithms and try out such, such techniques, just go and visit these two web applications which work on smartphones and are free to use.